So yeah, pretty, pretty silly situation to be in. You know, I would have crossed that bar many, many times and uh, not um, come unstuck before. Can I sit here? I think I can sit here. But uh, today was the day where I sort of run into a bit of trouble and flip my boat. Uh, not sure how much of the footage came out in the end, but um, I'm sure those videos start with a little bit of a, a little bit of flippage. <laughs> And now here we are. You know, we've just got a bit of a garage sale going on on the skiff, but everything's been given a good flush out with fresh now. Pretty much just hose the whole motor out. And now I know I need to flush it out pretty quick, and I know it's sort of almost better off not even working on the motor until I'm ready to fix it. But what I'm going to do is uh, I just uh, pop the spark plugs off, sprayed everything down with water. Now I'm spraying everything down with WD-40 because it's the best I've got, trying to disperse as much of the water. And now I've just pulled the spark plugs out and I uh, might uh, try and get any of the water that's in the engine out and then get the kids to school and then I'm going to work on this thing. But uh, I've tried to sort of oil it up a little bit and just get it juicy so uh, as soon as I get back I can sort of pull it apart and hopefully get this thing back and running. Okay, we're back. Uh, yeah, okay, so school drop-off's done. Kids are out of, the hair, wait, out of my hair so I've got a uh, bit of free time to sort of muck around and see if I can get this thing going again. It's going to be funny because if I put this video up, uh, my dad, after the last trip out, when I went out really wide and the engine conked out, uh, my dad really very rarely sends me an email as such. He sent me a big long email, like, because it's nice to know he watches the videos though. But um, basically detailing all the things I should have done. My dad's actually a pretty experienced boaty and fisherman, uh, but he's taken up golf these days. A guy that can fix just about anything, so... Him watching me out there struggling with my engine, I think was probably, he probably wasn't overly impressed. And now he's gonna be even less impressed. But anyway, I got the things he asked me to get, like a can of Start Your Bastards and spare spark plugs and a spanner. Basically what's going on is um, just slowly working through the engine and just taking parts off that I know are probably full of salt water. So taking the carby off, a little bit of corrosion up the top where the choke sort of float closes up, but um, I'll scrape that off and clean it up and get it all greased up again, but um, I actually just undid the bowl, uh, the little drain valve on the bottom with this little screw here, and um, it just basically spilled out water, and there's no fuel in there at all, it's all just water. So um, yeah, full of salt water, so we need to clean that out. All right, so a little float. It smells like it's got a bit of petrol on it still. I did sort of, uh, try and start it before I probably should have waited but okay so everything's drained out so we won't use that because it's salty we'll use this because it's clean and fresh just clean her out I wish I had a, like a compressor gun that'd be ideal but we don't so as long as it's as long as it's got no residue or debris in here we should be all right then we can just grease and put this back together so clear the bowl down for a sec. Yeah, okay, well, all in all, this doesn't look too bad. I reckon this is gonna go again, no problems. It's just uh, gonna be just a time-consuming process, just cleaning it out and re-greasing everything and getting it back up to scratch. Oh, there looks fine. Shoots through right. Open her up. It's definitely got salt all over it. I'm gonna sort of spray it with some 
bits and pieces. Just clean it all up. Once we get it running again, it won't be. Yeah, let's get this gonna. Oh yeah, that's a little memento to remind me of how stupid I am. Must have uh, clipped something on the boat, so sort of a bit of a nasty. So it's more of an impact than a. Uh, <laughs> it was more of an impact rather than a scrape. So it sort of just whacked my skin off somehow. But um, anyway, we'll get this uh, cleaned up. We'll get it put back together. Um, there is a few like see, see like every now and then I'm touching it and I can see they look like water drops So we'll get it all the water out <laughs> Even when I shake it you can see stuff coming out there So we'll get as much of the water out as we can Give it a good clean up and put it back together There we go Okay, let's put it back on. Reattach the fuel line. And put the little airbox back on, which has also been Clean, but I can see there's another drop there, so let's flick that out. careful not to disturb the gasket when I put it back on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next we have to reattach the choke. Uh, okay, choke's on. And now the throttle, if I can reach it, there we go, so that clips back on as well, and then we can see that working there, alright, next part of it all is, I actually did this already when I got home because I was too impatient, um, is to pull the spark plugs off, and uh, what I did is I had the spark plugs off, and I uh, took them out and then I gave it just a slight pull. I could turn it with my hand, I could turn the flywheel with my hand, but I couldn't actually pull it uh, with too much compression, too much water in there. So um, what's happened is I've managed to take the spark plugs off and then slowly gave it some pulls and water was just spurting out of the hair everywhere. So I took the motor off the bracket and actually just tipped it onto the ground and tipped our water everywhere. And so the whole engine block was basically full of water uh so we've got that out as much as possible i've put some new just two-stroke oil into the holes and just give it some slight pulls and sort of grease it up a bit we put the spark plugs back in and uh we'll see what happens like <laughs> there's no guarantees at this stage that this is going to work so we will see i'm sure i'll get it working just the motor actually looks like it's in pretty good condition right now apart from the fact that it's been underwater so what have we done we've got that on we got that on Let's uh, reprime the fuel, reattach the different, uh, so I can see fuel going into the little pump here. Okay, I can hear it going in. So hopefully we're filling that up, filling the bowl up with fresh fuel. I've checked these connections, I took this off here. Alright, well, I guess we can give it a pull and just see. Let's pull the choke out for now. Turn it on a little. Oh! 
Whoa. Maybe we should check in half. Oh. Okay, choke out. Give it a bit of gas. Okay, we got some we got some life. We got some life. <laughs> Let's turn that off because I actually don't have water running through it <laughs> and that'd be silly. Um, so I better hook it up to the water and we'll just run it for a while. A bit smoky, probably because of all the oil I put into it. Far out. What a journey. It's a pretty big deal and if I didn't get it going myself, I wouldn't have probably put this video up. However, okay, so the fact that it's two stroke, the fact that we pulled it out pretty quick out of the water and got straight onto it. I think it's all sort of working. Okay, so uh, it started. I'm just going to go and give it a good flush out now. Um, but I guess I wanted to just sort of wrap it up nicely. Um, yeah, I think I'm sort of struggling as to uh, what to make of it. What did I learn? What did I learn from this? I learned that uh, it's not worth taking the boat out if it's looking even a little bit dicey. I could have easily gone out. I was meant to be have a nice day. I had jack fishing gear. I was gonna go in the creek and I thought, oh, I'll bring some offshore gear just in case. Um, and then just silly kind of decision. I went out, you know, the surf wasn't big. It was, you know, but it was very choppy and it was like almost sort of mid to low tide, which made it sort of, um, you know, right, it was rising and jumping up everywhere, real choppy. And then the odd wave would come through and um, I got out no problems, you know, shot out pretty quick. And then I thought, you know what, it's pretty windy out here, it's pretty gross, might as well just head in and, you know, take it easy and go for a bit of a fish, try and get that jack on the skiff that I've been sort of searching for. And there was, uh, yeah, just sort of started heading in, made the call, probably could have, I could have stayed out and fished for two or three hours, or not even, even just a little bit more, and then the tide would have come up, and then it was dead flat, like I, when I dropped the kids off to school, there was like, no ways whatsoever. So even if I'd waited an hour, I just persevered out there and made a better call on maybe just hanging out a little longer, wait some, wait till some more water comes into the uh, the bar, and then I could have just probably easily just coasted in, not having to deal with any surf. But I thought, nah, bugger this, I'm going in, I'll go jack fishing, and uh, it wasn't to be. So it's funny how silly little decisions like that can uh, affect everything and ruin my fishing day. Friday's meant to be the day where I can get some stuff done. And, Put a good effort in and in the end i guess i get a video of a different sort and um i know it's another one of those ones that makes me look like a bit of a fool but hey you know like it's uh we are where we are now and and we sort of you know it's just honest to put it up i guess it's exactly what happened i did see a few people on the break wall watching me slowly swim in and and you know and i got a couple of breaks like seeing how uh seeing how the waves were affecting it and almost flipping it a few times and then getting it side on and then getting that one big wave that flipped it back upright that was a big win and i got lucky there and i could have lost a lot more gear as well so in the end everything sort of stayed strapped on the railblazer gear sort of held tight which was nice one uh rod holder did get knocked out so i lost one rod and my paddle i guess the more i know from this point on the uh hopefully less stupid decisions come from that I'm just lucky that my boat floats when it goes upside down and uh, I could sort of stay with it and swim it and it's small enough to sort of stay, stay with it. Uh, if it was a bigger boat or a tinny or something like that, I think it'd be game over. So yeah, give this thing a really good grease up and a really good flush out and I think we'll call that a win. Um, big thanks to the guys on Patreon, or well, for the price of shouting me a beer, you can sort of make a pretty big difference to the channel, uh, but all the guys that are signed up to it you've made such a big difference because last week I was able to finally, after many months of saving the Patreon money and the YouTube money, um, and just, you know, helping us get through family-wise, uh, what it has enabled me to do is save up enough money for my new computer. So my computer has not been replaced for about six years, I'd say, and uh, for like a graphic designer slash video editor to not replace their computer for that long is just unheard of. So uh, I finally got a new one. It's a nice new, uh, editing kind of laptop that's going to allow me to sort of edit this video a lot quicker and uh, it's a big help so big thanks to all the guys that are on there and it's it makes such a big difference 
anyway we'll get this uh finished up and uh yeah hopefully running and putting along anyway see you on the next vid hopefully with some fish probably should have just gone jack fishing and not tried to go outside